On behalf of CME Outfitters, I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us for this CMEO briefcase title, When is Switching ART Necessary? Today's case is focused on optimizing and simplifying a patient's treatment regimen and comorbid conditions that we should consider when making a switch. A thing that I hope will be apparent throughout this decision-making process is the need to consider patient preferences, past experiences, and expectations throughout the switching process. I am Leandro Mena. I am Chair and Professor of Population Health Science and Professor of Medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases at the University of Mississippi Medical Center in Jackson, Mississippi. The goal for today's activity is to provide you with the evidence and approaches to help you determine appropriate strategies for treatment switching in patients with HIV. Let's start by talking about the many reasons why we might want to make a medication switch when the patient is biologically suppressed. Perhaps to manage or prevent short-term or long-term adverse events, high pill burden or dosing frequency that may be impacting adherence, pregnancy, difficulties with food or fluid requirements, to prevent or mitigate drug-drug interactions, or to reduce cost or changes in formulae dictated by the patient's insurance. Another way to look at the reason for switching ART is where the switch is being considered in response to the patient's concerns versus the providers. As providers, we may see the clear benefit of a new regimen, but the patient, who is very comfortable and happy with a regimen that they've gotten used to take, may be hesitant to the change. Always make sure that you listen and address any concerns that the patient may have about the switch and new ART regimen. Now, let's meet our patient, Jared. He's a 34-year-old black man diagnosed with HIV six years ago. He identified as gay and his sexual partners are only men. He has history of a uh, virologic failure um, and his genotype shows resistance to NRTIs with M184B and KCC5R, but no NNRTI, PI, or integrase resistance. His viral load has been undetectable for the past nine months on a regimen that includes six pills per day and requires dosing twice a day. His BMI is 34 and his EGFR is 70. His hemoglobin A1C is 6. Hi, Jared. Good to see you again. I haven't seen you in about six months. How are you doing? Not bad. I'm juggling a lot of things. I'm taking some online classes, and then there's work and watching out for my mom. Uh, it all has me a little stressed. The good news is I'm able to work from home, which makes things a little easier. But I have to admit, <laughs> I sometimes miss the connection of the people in the office. No questions about it. Mental health is an important part of our overall well-being. Thanks for um, getting your real work done before the appointment. A couple of things have caught on my attention, but let's start with overall health. Um, how have you been feeling? Overall, I've been pretty good. For the most part, I'm sticking with the treatment plan. Honestly, I just don't feel great taking so many pills. I mean, it's not easy to take all of these pills and then making coordinated pill taking with meals. And sometimes I forget, although not very often, and I'm sorry to complain so much, I do realize that I need to understand that HIV is a chronic disease. Okay, you know, no need to be sorry. I mean, thanks for telling me. It helps me to better understand what's going on and give us an opportunity to talk through this and figure out ways to simplify your regimen so it may be easier for you to take your medications every day. Thanks, I appreciate that. The good news is that getting your field count down in simplifying your regimen is something where we can make an adjustment. Um, while we're talking about adjustments, can we talk about weight gain? Like a lot of people, I think I put on some weight being at home so much. I, I didn't really think I was overeating that much, but I've definitely put on a few pounds. I see that. I also noticed your hemoglobin A1C increased since last time. Oh, really? That's not good. Uh, my mom has diabetes, so I'm always worried about that especially since I'm carrying some extra weight. I think it would make sense for all these reasons to talk about making a change to your ART. 
there are a few things we need to discuss as we will be making this decision together. Okay. Sounds good. What are my options? Before switching or simplifying ERP, you should consider the following. Review the patient's full treatment history, including any history of prior biologic failure or pretreatment drug resistance. Review of cumulative resistance test results, the clinical response to prior regimens, past treatment associated intolerance, toxicities, and adverse events. Review active medication list, including herbal supplements and over-the-counter medications for drug-drug interactions. And finally, always consider patient preferences and lifestyles, as there are a number of options to consider when making a switch. Dictagravir is the most recently approved integrase inhibitor. It is available as a single tablet regimen co-formulated with entricitabine and tenofovir alafenamide. Several studies have demonstrated that safety and efficacy of switching to big FTC tab without compromising safety or efficacy from boosted PIs, those two NRTIs, dolutegravir, algavir, and 3TC, and from evultegravir, covisistat, tab, or TDF. New data is emerging about its efficacy regardless of pre-existing nucleoside reverse resistance test inhibitors resistance. Dolutegravir based regimens are also an option. The two drug regimen, dolutegravir plus bamibudine, is indicated for treatment naive adults with HIV and has shown to be safe and effective in switching from three drugs or four drugs staff based ART. Abacavir, dolutegravir, 2TC is another option, as well as dolutegravir plus rupivirin if no rupivirin resistance. Doravirin is a novel non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. The drive shift study was an open label active control non inferiority trial in the, with individuals who were biologically suppressed for at least six months on two nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors plus a boosted protease inhibitor, boosted LV tegravir, or a non nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor to switch to once daily single tablet doravirin, lamubudine, lamibudine and tenofovir desuproxyl fumarate. This regimen was well tolerated and maintained viral suppression after 48 weeks. Darunavir is available, co-formulated with covisistat, entricitabine, and tenofovir alafenamide. The Emerald study investigated the effectiveness and tolerability of switching to darunavir, covisistat, ftc tab from boosted PI, FTC, TDF. And STORE evaluated the switch from a ritonavir boosted PI based regimen in both studies, all participants had sustained viral suppression at the moment of the switch. And the Runabir covid star FTC tab was found to be non-inferior in maintaining virologic suppression. There are a number of things we need to consider as we are deciding together about what medication we put you on. When someone is on a stable regimen with virologic suppression, we don't want to disrupt that. Unfortunately, the good news is that we have several good options. That's good. It's one less thing to worry about. So if we go with a drug that doesn't have to be taken so often, are there trade-offs? It's a good question because we always need to think about balancing the decision with the potential for trade-offs. We have options for different agents, but there are a couple of things we need to think about. First, the potential for weight gain. As we age and our metabolism slows down, we are already at risk for weight gain. You are right on the border of pre-diabetes. So we need to be careful. We also need to think about kidney function because we do not want to make that worse. Hey, that all makes sense. I do realize that I need to own my weight from a perspective of healthy eating and exercising regularly as opposed to something that I tend to do in spurts. Other things that we need to talk about or we, that we need to think about. We can definitely simplify your dosing and put you on a regimen with less billboarding. I want to see you in a month to check in and do labs to be sure you continue to have a good biologic suppression. And also to see how you're tolerating the new medication. Anytime we introduce a new medication, there is a possibility that you could experience some side effects and I don't want you to discontinue your medication. Doc, I really appreciate you talking me through all the things to consider. I like the plan, and I will be really strict about taking the medication. You know, I like to journal, so on my end, I'll keep track of everything, including the side effects during the first month, so I can report back to you when I see you. That's a great idea, Jerry. So this is what I'm thinking about. Okay.
involving Jader in the decision process and considering his concerns helps to improve my relationship with him, the trust that he has in me as a provider, and in general, our therapeutic relationship and clinical outcomes. After switching ART regimens, DHHS guidelines recommend monitor patients within three months due to assess tolerability, viral suppression, adherence, and safety. It is my practice to bring patients within four to six weeks to make sure that the viral load continues to be suppressed and they're having no problems tolerating the new regimen. When switching from a stable regimen, even if the patient is, has a better safety profile, it's important to monitor potential side effects that could result when starting a new regimen. Another consideration are the comorbidities associated with HIV. People living with HIV have a two times to 20 times greater risk of end-stage renal disease than the general population. Prevalence of chronic kidney disease in people living with HIV is increasing, often related to hypertension and diabetes, which may impact quality of life and survival. Long-term ART exposure contributes to the burden of renal disease, highlighting the need to choose treatments that have demonstrated renal safety. Integrase inhibitors are recommended ART in multiple guidelines because of favorable efficacy, better effect on lipids, fewer drug-drug interactions, and tolerability. Although data are inconsistent, some observational cohorts report a weight gain, approximately three kilos over 48 to 78 weeks after a switch. Other trials have found no clear evidence of overall increase in weight following a switch to an integrase-based regimen in biologically suppressing individuals. Discordance among studies highlights a need to remain critical of whether weight gain observed with integrase is a widespread class effect warranting action or whether lifestyle, age, and population factors may have a greater influence. This slide shows integrase-based regimen, medial and mean weight gain measuring kilograms at 96 weeks across several registrational trials. Let's go back to our patient here. If we remember, he had two past biologic failures with a NRTI is resistant, but not resistant to NNRTIs, PIs, or integrase resistance. Currently, he's biologically suppressed and he's been suppressed for the past nine months. His BMI is 34, his GGFR is 70, his hemoglobin and one c is 6. So after our discussion, will you change your switch choice for Jared? Let's summarize with our SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. That is, what I hope that you will take from this presentation to apply to your practice. Seize opportunities to optimize and simplify treatment for patients with HIV while maintaining biologic suppression. Consider key issues. Improve short-term and long-term efficacy, safety and tolerability. Decrease high field burning and difficulties with food requirements that may possibly impact adherence. Prevent and mitigate drug-drug interactions. Always engage patients in shared decision-making always considering patients' past experiences, preferences, and expectations. Thank you for joining me today for this CME All Briefcase. Please visit www.cmeoutfeeders.com for other case-based activities in HIV. I hope reviewing our case, Jared, has provided some new insight and strategies for optimizing and simplifying ART therapy for your patient with HIV. When we engage the patient in the decision and consider personal preferences, I do believe that we are setting the patient up for success. Thank you.